Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am going to show you a technique that is pure magic. <laughs> At least it appears that way. And that is a floating element window card. So you can have a little peek at the card here that sentiment seems to float right in the middle. And I'm gonna be using some of the brand new Pink Fresh Studio products. If you missed yesterday's video, I used this Folk Garden 2 hot foil plate and coordinating stencils and die to create a beautiful card. But today I'm gonna be featuring the brand new brush sentiments. And look how big these sentiments are. I'm holding up my hand so you can see. Now there is a stamp set, a hot foil plate set, a die set, and a stencil that coordinate within both of these product suites. And I'm gonna be featuring the hot foil plates as well as the coordinating die for this beautiful brushed sentiment set. Now I'm starting out with my Gemini foil press. I have it on medium heat. I have my foil plate on there with the back side facing the platform. I'm gonna place my foil on top with the pretty side toward the design of my foil plate. I'm gonna place my cardstock and my shim on top. And once my timer is up, I'm gonna run that through my Gemini Junior. And this applies both heat and pressure to transfer this foil onto the cardstock. And I think this silver holographic foil is so beautiful. So that is the first plate in the set. I'm gonna go ahead and foil the second plate in the set so that you can see all of the sentiments included in this set. And I'm gonna follow the same process. I have my Gemini foil press set to medium heat because I am using the Spellbinders Glimmer foil today and I find that the Spellbinders foil likes a little more heat than the Crafter's Companion Gemini foil press foil. So I'm using a little more heat. I set my timer for about 15 seconds once I place my foil and cardstock on top and then I run it through my die cut machine and you can see the beautiful foiled results I get. Now I did wanna mention I am using Hammer Mill 100 pound cardstock today. It is my favorite for foiling. And I thought I would show you what you can do with these negative foil pieces as well. So I am using the solid hot foil plate from Pink Fresh Studio. This is out of stock right now, but it should be back in stock soon, hopefully. And I wanted to show you that you can get a lot of miles out of these negative portions of foil that seem to go to waste. So I have that hot foil, that solid hot foil plate on my platform, I've allowed it to heat up. And then once again, I'm putting the pretty side of the foil facing the design of this hot foil plate. Now it's a solid hot foil plate, so the design is the flat part. I did use a shim on top of the top plate of my Gemini foil press sandwich here. And it's just a shim of copy paper, just a slight bit more pressure. And you can see once I run that through my Gemini Junior, I have the reverse foiled effect of these hot foil plates. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna show you these die cut here in just a moment. So I'm gonna show you this process again. Remember, pretty side of the foil always faces the design of the plate, even if the plate design is solid metal, okay? <laughs> Then I'm going to place my hammer mill cardstock on top, a little paper shim as well as the shim that comes with the foil press system, run that through my die cut machine, and I set my timer to about 25 seconds for this one so it was good and hot, and then I have the reverse foiled effect as well. So both of these are absolutely beautiful. You either have the word foiled or the surrounding area foiled with the sentiment in white. Now I'm using the coordinating one piece die to die cut these sentiments. So I'm just lining that up, holding it in place with a little bit of removable adhesive and then running that through my Gemini Junior just in my normal die cutting sandwich. I do think I added a cardstock shim in there because my plates are getting a little bit well loved and it needed a little extra pressure. <laughs> and once I die cut the reverse image, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut the other images as well. And there's these little inside areas that pop out and I think that is so cool. So here's a look at both of them side by side. This is the original foiled version, like how it's intended. And then this is the reverse foiled version using that solid hot foil plate. So don't 
throw away your foil pieces. Save them, grab one of these solid hot foil plates and get twice as much out of that foil. Now I have a piece of cardstock here. This is Nina Solar White Heavyweight Cardstock. It is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I've used the blanket stitched oval to die cut a window in that. And now I am taking some clear acetate and I'm cutting it into a strip that measures about three eighths of an inch wide. And this is going to help me create my floating element portion of my window card. So I'm attaching this foiled birthday sentiment onto this strip of acetate here. And I'm gonna flip it over and on the back, I am going to attach a second die cut that's just cut from some plain white cardstock. And I'm gonna sandwich that acetate strip between the foiled version and the plain white cardstock version just to give this a nice finished appearance from the inside of the card. Now I need to cut a window onto my card front as well. And so I'm taking this panel that I've already die cut the oval from and I'm taking the oval that pops out of the center of this and I'm putting it back onto this A2 horizontal card front using a little bit of repositionable adhesive. Then I'm going to take my die and pop that in place right over that die cut that I've adhered. I removed the panel and I ran that through my die cut machine. Now this didn't cut all the way through the cardstock because I'm using a heavyweight cardstock, but it did create an impression and that allows me to place my die cut back onto this card front again, run it through my die cut machine, and now I have a window card and both of these window elements will line up perfectly. Now I stamped and die cut this happy word from the Happy Birthday Sentiment Stamp and Coordinating Die Set from Pink Fresh Studio. And now I have a second horizontal card base that I'm doing a little ink blending on. So I am using the layered sunburst stencils from Pink Fresh Studio. This is the A2 version. There is also a slimline version. And I'm blending in a rainbow pattern around this stencil. No rhyme or reason. I'm kind of skipping through this. I do have another video that I have created featuring this stencil set. And I will be sure to throw that up in a card here for you. But basically, I'm just adding some pattern because this is what's going to show through my window on my finished card. Now keep in mind, this is a card base that I'm stenciling on, not a card front. So it's a full card. And for the last layer of these stencils, I went ahead and used an iridescent glitter paste because I mean, who doesn't love a little sparkle, a little rainbow, a little holographic foil? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, I am all about that. So, you know, this card would make me happy. So now it's time to attach our floating element. So I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid glue on the back side of this frame panel that I created, and I'm gonna lay it right over the top of that acetate strip that I attached to my sentiment earlier. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess. Now keep in mind, I am creating a floating sentiment today but you could create a floating element, a heart, a star, any other stamped and die cut image, you could float in the center of a window just like I'm doing with this element today. Now, once my floating element is in the center of that window, I took the panel and I adhered it to the window card base using some foam adhesive. And now I'm going to add some tape runner adhesive inside of this colorful card that I created and I'm going to position the window card right inside of that colorful card. So this essentially creates a trifold card. And the reason that I created this in a trifold design is so that when you open up the colorful panel, there is still a part where you can write your sentiment or your note inside of the card. Now, if you wanna just create it more simply, you can definitely have this float over an open window and no design in the back but you kind of run out of a space to write a personal message on the inside. So that's why I created the trifold version of this card. Now I finished off this super sparkly, super shiny card with a few metallic silver pearls from Pink Fresh Studio. And that finishes off the very magical floating sentiment window card today. 
<laughs> I absolutely love this card. You could give it to me any day, any week. It doesn't even have to be my birthday. And I would love this. And I think it is a fun way to create an interactive card. Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube, but head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I will have that linked below. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, a complete list of supplies, and you're going to want to join me over on Instagram today. I will have my Instagram profile linked below as well. We are having an Instagram hop celebrating this brand new Pink Fresh Studio release, and there's a lot of eye candy and a lot of prizes to be had. So be sure you join me over on Instagram today as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials. And if you loved this video, I would love it if you would leave me a comment below and share this video with a friend. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you make some magic and I hope you have a fabulous day.